Hi, uh, my name is Carl Pearson, and uh, this is my video number 26, and perhaps the most important video of all for small business people, and I'll get into that, but uh, it's really vital, and I think you should pass it on to anyone that you know is in small business. It really affects them, uh, the outcome of, uh, uh, well, of the outcome to them could very well be changed uh, dramatically in their favor uh, by listening to this video. Uh, this video explains the secret federal public policy of destroying small business and the middle class and the millions of small business opportunities that result uh, because of that uh, with the factors that small business people have to keep in mind. I'm 83 years old, a high school dropout. I received my BA degree magna cum laude in political science. I'm a graduate of Harvard Law School and I've been a small business owner for 74 years with my first business in North Platte, Nebraska as a nine-year-old delivering the local newspaper on my bicycle. Today is my 56th day of self-imposed quarantine. We have more than 1,350,000 confirmed cases and about 81,000 deaths due to the coronavirus and I'm highly vulnerable. This is a news flash. I just saw a news story just as I was getting set to shoot this video that confirms what I have prepared for this video during the past two days and I'm now quoting from the Washington Post. Senior Trump officials are growing increasingly wary of the massive federal spending to combat the economic downturn and are considering ways to limit the impact of future stimulus efforts on the national debt, according to six administration officials and four external advisors familiar with the matter. While no one in the administration is advocating immediate cuts, the unease among senior Trump advisors about federal spending comes as the White House halts talks with Congress on additional emergency measures to rescue a U.S. economy facing its worst crisis in generations. And that's the end of quote. And remember, all of my video that you're going to hear now was prepared way before this news flash came out. But it does confirm what I'm going to be telling you. There are two types of intent, with the more obvious meaning that the outcome is desired, and the less known meaning is that the actor is aware that as a result of his or her action or inaction, that a certain result will occur. This latter meaning is called knowledgeable intent. It appears to me that most Republicans and some Democrats in Congress actually intend to destroy small business and that the rest of Congress has knowledgeable intent that by its actions and inactions, small business will not be able to survive. Of course, politicians are not going to announce this intention, but will try to make it appear otherwise. But don't be fooled. Destruction is happening and accelerating without any daily announcement of the number of small businesses destroyed. To reach this conclusion, you have to understand that one, state and local government cannot create the massive amount of money needed to save the nation's small businesses and that's because of the constitution there's no power to create money and that two congress with the known urgency if it plans to save small businesses so far has done almost nothing to save the nation's 30 million small businesses except for saying falsely that it is helping all Congress has done is mere tokenism and misleading, providing perhaps five million small businesses uh, money with, uh, to pay unnecessary employees for failing businesses for a month or two and perhaps several thousand dollars for other things. But that's all that's been done. Congress is not stupid. It has business persons who understand business. Trump understands business and small business persons or their accountants could be hired as consultants
to explain what I am readily able to explain in this video. Notwithstanding access to the needed information, federal aid to small businesses so far has provided only to a small percentage of small businesses through PPP, that is the Payroll Protection Program, which is a subsidy for the variable avoidable expense of payroll, but not for the two types of overhead expenses that will cause a small business to go under if not covered. The PPP assumes without any basis that small businesses are going to continue without sales or income and that all that small business needs for saving is someone to pay the salaries of persons who are no longer needed. What a joke! But to most people in the U.S. it may sound like there is an effort to save small business, but this is not so. The effort is to save jobs for big business and not, quote, waste, unquote, the huge amounts of money need, needed to save the businesses which compete against big business and make big business less profitable as a result. The purported reasoning of Congress is illogical. The first thing a small business needs when it has little sales and income is money to pay the business overhead expenses of the business, such as the monthly rental, the contracts for computer, telephone, electricity, heat, and other services. But what good is a business without its owner to run the business, who needs money for a payroll if there is no business? We also have to provide for the personal overhead expenses of the owner and his or her family, which was being paid from business profits such as the rent or mortgage payment, food costs, automobile expenses, health care costs, property insurance, life insurance, telephone, repairs, electricity, heat, even criminal activity. If the owner can't house and feed his or her family, the business will fail as the owner will go elsewhere to obtain what the family needs, perhaps food lines, going to court to block foreclosures or eviction proceedings, government or private employment, unemployment compensation, welfare, begging on the streets, selling assets, dropping insurance payments. You know what happens when you, have, when you run out of money. This will occur after the owners put in their savings hoping for a miracle and then when realizing no miracle is going to occur, let their businesses die because Congress has a secret public policy of letting the nation's 30 million small businesses die, but which is quite clear when you look at the facts as I'm revealing them. By totally failing to cover the two types of overhead expenses and covering instead the variable avoidable cost of payroll, Congress has created a public policy of killing off small businesses, the former backbone of the U.S. economy, apparently to be able to extend even more relief to the larger and largest businesses. It is not that Congress is stupid. Republicans won't provide the funds to save small business because these funds, as they see it, are needed to save big business and let the economy become even more concentrated. Big businesses such as Trump's hotels, cruise industry, airlines, Boeing and other airplane manufacturers, and to provide more tax relief for the rich. And the Democrats are going along with that and won't change things even if they obtain a total victory in November 2020. It's too bad that Congress gets paid when most of the population is heading towards homelessness and starvation. We should de designate everyone a congressperson so that all individuals in the U.S. get paid. A real program to save small business is too late when the businesses have closed down, with their owners moving to Hoover Bills throughout the country, and the business property they had rented by someone else, with a tax lien on the owner, and the customers now buying from Amazon or Walmart or the like, and the owners of the small business filing for bankruptcy. This is what I see taking place, which is, the, which is the destruction of most of the nation's 30 million small businesses and the middle class by the end of 2020 or earlier. The destruction of the nation's small businesses creates a substantial amount of opportunity for those willing to assume the risk and assuming they have the needed capital. I'm going to list a lot of observations uh, that someone should keep in mind when deciding to start a small business at this time. 
The list is in no particular order whatsoever. 1. If I'm correct, small business owners should get out when a market still exists for the lease and assets, and to get out at, at least by the time that both overheads are not being covered, and to take into account your loss of savings to cover your personal overhead. This means that many owners should get out when the owner starts dipping into savings to try to save the non-savable small business. 2. I'm not taking bankruptcy into account, but owners should consider what advantages and costs would be entailed. 3. Leases, properties, deposits, personnel, many other costs will be substantially less in the declining economy. 4. Consumers and businesses will look for different things in the declining new economy. 5. Consider the impact of the coronavirus in your potential marketing area, the prospects for opening up your business, and the status of any vaccine or cure. 6. Consider whether employees are available under current immigration law and practices. 7. Prepare a full budget of the assets you will need. 8. Understand that the major retailers are increasing their monopolies or oligopolies in purchasing, advertising, distri distribution, and delivery. 9. But they are exploiting their labor, so you might have a source of trained employees or independent contractors if you treat them better and fairly. 10. Try to make use of persons working from home or travel to reduce your cost of physical space. 11. Use lower cost DBAs, that's doing business as, and assumed name certificates instead of entities such as corporations, limited partnerships, and limited liability companies. They require much more money to use and often don't save you from personal liability when you are required to give your personal guarantee anyway. 12. Almost nobody asks for the owner's education, religion, race, color, or sexual orientation when ordering from a website, so keep that in mind. 13. See if you can't pull together uh, one or more active or silent partners to raise the needed funding, in which case you would probably need a more sophisticated legal entity. 14. Consider manufacturing PPE to the extent there are shortages. 15. Consider starting a business to fit into federal plans to create jobs for the jobless perhaps in infrastructure or global warming remediation or in conservation of energy. 16. See if you have any ideas when viewing my sixth video, which is setting up an adult education program to train people to be the assistant to the owner of a small business, or my seventh video to set up a radio advertised community website for free local advertising by all residents and, and businesses in the zip code. My ninth video, which is local political activity that you may decide to engage in. And my thirteenth video, ways to make money after losing your job. Seventeen, remember that when you render services, it is generally more difficult to expand operations than when you are selling a product, unless, unless the service is automated and provided by a website. 18. Understand or find someone who understands advertising through social media. 19. Use low-cost or no-cost Craigslist to find, quote, gig, unquote, help, as well as full-time employees or independent contractors. 20. Are you able to apply artificial intelligence to a useful activity? 21. Are you able to relocate to save costs and to be in the area of your new small business? 22. Have you done research to determine whether a market exists? 23. You should be aware that many small businesses are able to provide goods and services at lower cost than a monopoly, and that a monopoly will still have areas, sometimes called niche businesses, in which small business can be very competitive and profitable. 24. You can reach everyone in a zip code area at an affordable cost and have a contained area in which to provide your services or distribute your goods. 25. State and local governments have no money to save small business because state and local governments have no constitutional authority to create money. 
This is the exclusive power of the federal government, which is electing to create money to help big business and to pay for tax reductions for the rich, but almost nothing to save small business. 26. Expect and protect your interests from an increase in economic and other crimes, sometimes for the temporary purpose of obtaining food, shelter, and heat in a jail cell. 27. Expect the homeless to create Hoover bills, probably to be called Trump bills or congressional bills in or near your home, and air bomb to list Hoover bill vacancies for a fee. 28. Maybe there is a business opportunity in providing community television and or other services such as child care, medical services, internet and email, or goods such as hot food to the nation's Hoover bills. 29. You have to realize that as small businesses go out of business, there are more persons seeking jobs and now less willing to support saying, saving the remaining small businesses, in effect finally destroying the middle class and having everyone hope to get a job paying $10 an hour or less as automation eliminates even more jobs. 30. Government statistics are at least twice as bad as announced. If you hear an unemployment rate of 22%, for example, it is probably 44% when adding back the underemployed and persons who have given up trying to get a job and the prior claimants who have lost ex who have exhausted their benefits and the persons who are prevented from making their claims by overly strict state laws. 31. Congress is not going to enact a law giving 30 million small businesses 10,000 or 25,000 or 50,000 a month at a monthly cost of 300 billion, 750 billion or 1.5 trillion. We all know that. So there is not going to be any program to save small business. Get used to it and make your plans accordingly. 32. The main media and its paid employees are not going to say what I'm saying for various reasons that would require a separate video. But one main reason that comes to mind is that faster collapse of the middle class would adversely affect big business and the amount of advertising they place and the media jobs dependent on the advertising. Well, I've said what I've planned to say, and I'll say so long until my next video.